Um, would you mind just uh, talking about what is the Brantford Sports Council and, and can you explain your involvement throughout the community? Yeah, uh, well, the Sports Council, uh, we the Sports Councils have been around since early 2000. We were one of the first ones uh, into the whole uh, understanding of Sports Councils with the Ontario government and Ontario ministry. It was, it was launched and then we put the, uh, the program together um, with everybody. And then we've been a, a, a found, a basically one of the founding members of sports councils in Ontario. Um, since then, uh, it's graduated into more of a larger community. As I mentioned earlier, there's some 43 sports councils in Ontario, all different sizes, different communities, large, small, governed all a little differently. But basically, we're a collaboration of sport organizations and community partners that uh, work cooperatively to provide um, a collective voice in an ongoing development um, of education promotion of the benefit of sport in the community. Every community has a huge uh, following in sport. Everyone's engaged in sport, everyone, not-for-profit sport groups, hotel, everybody in your community is engaged in sports. Oh, parents, there's, there's, whether it's a walk or a run, or not a not a, one of our what I call our minor sports. Everyone's engaged in sport. Um, and our mission is to build quality community sport uh, recreation uh, developments in our community. Um, promote the in terms of what we try to promote is the uh, encourage communication and cooperation among individuals in the organizations in the community. So we've been particularly in this last couple of years with the COVID stuff and the COVID nineteen pandemic, we've been sort of the go-to person group in coordinating between our minor sports groups and municipality uh, in terms of protocols, procedures, uh, et cetera. So that, that's that been something that has taken a lot of time in the last basically two years now. Um, but we advocate for equ equi equitable sport and equitable opportunity in sport um, and celebrating sport achievements, which is what we're doing on March the 12th and the value of volunteers in our community and in doing all that. Um, the, we do work closely with the municipality in terms of uh, trying to maximize our efficiencies and du avoid duplications, but also to be more efficient. So a lot of the uh, group, major groups in Ontario, like Baseball Ontario or Basketball Ontario or Soccer Ontario or whatever their names are, they pass this all down in terms of all these regulations and how the local grassroots have to operate. So what's happened is that with this pandemic, it was all agreed to what they would do and how they would follow the different protocols. For most part, all of them had great protocols in place at those organization levels, passed down to the grassroots that had to implement them. So that, that's been a big challenge for them all because it's costly and, and all of that. And then we're shut down, open, we're shut down. But then you have to make sure that the municipality and their support services have the opportunity to up, update what they need to do with hiring and staffing, because we were, you know, you get, get new news on the Friday and from the government and you're trying to react to what's happening in the next 10 days because you don't have the legislation as yet. So there, there's been that, but that's been a very cooperative effort on all parts of all people. I can't, I can't say enough about uh, our municipality and our parks and rec group and our tourism group in terms of their support for what they've done. Uh, and those are relationships that have been established for a long time. Uh, we don't always don't agree on everything, but at least we have a platform to have that discussion. Uh, uh, so, you know what, uh, we're, we are where we are right now. We're launching for the first time this year after a, a two year hiatus, uh, our sports award uh, and recognition program. Uh, historically, it has been uh, in a banquet setting where you'd have 200 and 220 plus people. But we've outgrown that that whole uh, uh, area of doing that. We were going to take it into a much larger, broader base to recognize all those uh, in the community, all the athletes, the coaches, the families, the parents, and the community partners in a larger venue. So we're hosting our venue this year at the Sanderson Center uh, in Brantford, which is an amazing theater. If you haven't been there, it will normally seat around 1,200. Uh, with the current 50% rule, we up to 600 can go. We're anticipating somewhere between 
three and 400 people participating in that. And uh, they're all gonna march in under their banner for each of the support groups. And uh, we're gonna go through our normal presentation and recognizing the, uh, the various categories uh, that we have out there uh, for females and youth. There's, there's 10 categories that we recognize each year. And we even recognize officials, okay, officials of the year. So all of that presentation will continue to be the same. The, uh, the, the added attraction, we're gonna make it a fun and entertaining day for all those that attend. So we're put, we've got that into our, into our presentation. And uh, I, I think it's gonna be a great to start for us. Uh, this is a new venue. So there's always some things that you, have, you learn as you go along the way, but our Sanderson Center, they have the technology. They're gonna record, you'll appreciate. They're going to record the whole thing for us. They have a separate laptops to do all the videos. So you know what, you can't, you can't buy that expertise uh, and we don't have it. So that, that is a huge plus for us. It allows us to focus on our, on our members and the youth and families. And it's all about getting it to the grassroots. And I've, I've, I sound like a broken record to most people because this has been our mainstay of our theme for a long time. At the end of the day, it's all about the kids. And you know what? We have a number of great athletes in our sport hall of recognition in Brantford. And when they get inducted, yeah, everyone knows about what they accomplished on the sports scene world or locally or North America, whatever, and the awards they've won. But they all talk about where they grew up, who mentored them, who helped them, whether it was a teacher or a coach or another player. So you know what? It's, it's all about the grassroots. And if you don't have a good solid base to build on, you don't get that pyramid uh, of developing of sport in your community. So that's, that's a huge challenge for us all the time is how do you engage people to get involved or your youth to get involved in families to get involved at that base level? Because if you don't have a solid base, you, you can't build the pyramid and let them graduate through that process, however it is. So that's why we're talking about Brantford as a center of excellence. Uh, you may not know, but a number of years ago, uh, we were recognized as the tournament capital of Ontario by the Ontario legislature. Uh, we were the second one in Canada. The first one, I believe, was in Richmond, BC. And uh, so that's a, uh, we try to capitalize on that in terms of our sports tourism, our sports tourism strategy. And there's a lot of people that make that happen. And so we've, the, the sports groups get engaged. Uh, we can host and bid on a variety of things. We know what the criteria is. Our city council has been very supportive in, in allowing us to work with the groups to host and bid. Uh, we've also had a number of, uh, we also have a number of legacy tournaments, which uh, we run every year. So like we have the Walter Gretzky House League Tournament, we have the Walter Gretzky International Tournament. Uh, we have a huge soccer, one of the largest in Ontario uh, when we were operating, uh, when we were open. Uh, so we have, an, an, and basketball is huge in this area and baseball, I can't tell you how many major tournaments they run. So in that whole inventory of our sport group, our sport collective, we have a lot of activity and it's, you know what? 99% of them are volunteers. They don't get paid. This is what they do. They do it with their kids. Sometimes we've got coaches that have done it for years that aren't, they're not, they're still not, the kids aren't engaged anymore, but we want to attract that younger group to get engaged because when they get to that 20 and over 20, there's sort of a void and we have a big void in volunteers between that 20 to 40, they've got other things to do. They're in school, they're starting their first job, they're having their first family. Uh, so those are important, but we gotta find ways to engage them. I don't need them to sit on a board. It takes a long time to sit on a board and figure it all out sometimes. How do you wanna participate? So our website is, is, is under construction still, but part of that is how do you engage in your community? There's lots of ways to participate. We wanna be able to show you that. We're, we're, we're taking in addition to our, in addition to our uh, founding members, we've opened up uh, membership to families and affiliate members to families and, and youth to be part of it, no cost. Just be part of the voice for sport in your community. We, we love to hear what, what you're saying, what, what's in, what your interests are. And, and we have mutual interests because at the end of the day, it's all about the kids. So that's why I keep on coming back to that. So that's very important for us as we go forward. Uh, I'm just trying to think of the, the number of people that we have for the, the, the youth sport groups in our community represent the largest volunteer group in our community. Maybe with it, 
maybe with the exception of United Way, which is covers everybody and, and it's done by all the industry, et cetera, et cetera. But within that group, we're the largest volunteer organization in our community. We are also the largest user, the largest customer for our municipality when it comes to uh, all, all the sport venues. So if we're healthy, they're healthy. Uh, you know what? Uh, we always say when we're looking at, uh, geez, we, we could have got more people into that event or we could have had more, uh, more, more people to the tournament. But you know what? If you don't market it properly, and we've got a great tourism group here that, that really support. We have someone in tourism who looks after sports marketing with us, which that's, that's, a, that's another experience that we have, but we don't have to do it. They can help coordinate all that and get it through all those protocols and procedures you might have to do with the city. <laughs> you might have to do with the city. Um, and, uh, but we, we get support on a lot of fronts. Uh, it's exciting times now because we're looking past where we've been and we're focused on the future. So when we, we made the decision in late, mid-January, we were going to go live. Uh, and if it didn't happen for whatever reason, it got shut down, we could live with that. But I think everybody got on board and they're excited about doing that. They, they, there's nothing more beneficial. And I've seen it in the last few weeks when we've opened up a little bit with all these kids, four to eight to 10, 12 year olds on the field with friends, socializing, taking that time to be and have fun and smile. I mean, they've been, we've been in isolation for so long. This is a great opportunity. And it's just not the physical part of it. That's important. It's the social and the mental part of all of this and uh, the social interaction. And sports is a catalyst for sport or for youth development. Sport is a catalyst in our community for everybody. So everyone is engaged in it. So that's sort of been our whole theme. So we're, we're looking at having fun with this. Uh, we want everybody to engage wherever they can. And I'll tell you what, they can go to our website and uh, uh, they can join us for the event. We have a big flag raising going on on the 12th of the morning with the city and the mayor. And uh, uh, I'd love to uh, send you some information back when it's post the event, but uh, we've got an exciting time going on throughout the week. During every day of the sports celebration week, we have a different venue each day, a different program, recognizing different things in our community. And it's not us, it's a pull strategy. We want people to be part of it. So you can be part of it in a lot of different ways. Come out, have some fun. We got lots of prizes where we get, we're donating as well. We've got some great people that have donated some prizes. So every time you enter uh, or do anything with us for throughout this uh, banquet and then or awards program and the sports week, what you get, you're going to get is a, is a, um, is a, uh, uh, a whole group of information and prizes going out to people and recognizing them. So we have a lot of nominations that come in for achieving our finalists for our awards historically. So what we've done this year is that everyone that gets nominated is going to get recognized. So for all the categories. So you normally, you would go through the process and say, okay, you'd go back to the ones that were finalists. You'd go back to their nominators and let them know. Then you'd communicate with the finalists to get them all in, coordinate them coming, who's coming and all that. This time, because we have such a large venue that we can accommodate, we're going to recognize everybody that gets nominated because not a lot of, not a lot of groups, uh, played games or won championships this year, but there were a lot of good people that kept those teams together over this period of time. And, you know, kudos, it just isn't in Brantford. That was everywhere. You find that, you'll find the common thread with volunteers in most communities. We're a little more, we're smaller. So we have a lot, what I would call more integration and more on face-to-face -face discussion with, with people all the time. Uh, in some of the larger communities, uh, it's, it's more difficult but they have a massive amount of people that they deal with. Um, so it's all about relationships. It's all about making it, uh, uh, making it fun for the kids. And, uh, but everybody can sign up. You can go to our website, which is uh, www.branfordsportscouncil.com. Uh, I'm just here to CA. And then we have our Facebook page, which is uh, Branford Sport uh, FC. And we have Twitter and Instagram now. So we have all the multimedia. If you're going to communicate with the youth, you have to, as you know, you have to have all that multimedia. So I'm, I'm really pleased that you guys were doing this with us today. Uh, I would just say to all those other communities, keep pushing forward. Keep thinking positive. Keep those, keep those smiles on those kids' faces. 
and uh, get in, get them engaged. And I'll tell you what, if anyone wants to come down and visit with us, we are, we're running a number of, we do historically have run a number of workshops and sessions and seminars in terms of promoting events and activities. We have a whole bevy of, of initiatives we're doing here. Our tourism strategy with the city is was finalized this past year. So now it's just pushing forward. And, and the all the groups are anxious to uh, get back to return to play. So return to play is so important. Hopefully with this summer and the rules that are changing, hopefully again in mid-February, early March, uh, at least what all the politicians are saying, uh, we'll be back to some sort of normalcy for everybody. And that's that's absolutely wonderful. I think everyone is looking forward to getting back to a a somewhat normal this summer. Hopefully, I wanted to talk about more uh, about the awards um, ceremony and 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 the nomination specifically. What cry to, uh, or sorry, what what categories are available uh, for someone to be nominated, and what is the criteria that someone needs to meet? Okay, well, we have criteria for each of them, each of the awards, and the awards include, uh, I've got our program here that we've used. So we have the, uh, what I would call the, and they're all sponsored. This is the Sportsmanship and Dedication Award, and this is the Aiden Churters Award. Um, and that award is uh, provided for, I had the list here, um, for dedication in sport. So what you've got, and then you've got the Phyllis Gretzky, which is the Female Youth Leadership uh, Award. Uh, it is someone in a group that has been a leader in their group, uh, a young lady, uh, and has stood out in terms of working with the group and, and, and doing all that. And then we have the Male Youth Leadership, which is the Frank Bricker Memorial Award um, uh, as well. Uh, and they all have, get a big trophy. They all get a nice plaque and uh, uh, as well, engraved plaque to recognize that. Um, and then we have the, uh, this is in the order we present them. Dave Levac, who was a former MPP Speaker of the House for Ontario, is from Brantford. He's a personal good friend. He's been a great supporter of all we do here. Uh, he, several years ago now, uh, wanted to recognize the officials. So he sponsors a trophy called the Award of Excellence for Sport Officiating. Uh, and then we, we recognize that and all the different organizations uh, uh, provide us with their, their nominees for that. It's, it's a little more, it's different because each sport is a little different, but they, the, the referees and those guys that do all the officiating don't always get a, a good look at anything because you're on the ice and you're in the heat of sport, but this is a good opportunity to recognize that. They're important, especially during this pandemic because there, there were no games. I, I give credit to those organizations that started up training programs for new referees and engaging younger kids at, I think they start at 14 or so in hockey, I know, and then through 17, 18 and graduate them through a program. So that's very important because that again is our, is our base for our, if you don't have good young officials growing up, you, you know, you, you don't get that them to develop as they go. I don't care what the sport is. Um, the John Macklin Memorial Award is the, John Macklin was a major coach in high school here. Uh, he was coach of the year. So that's the coach of the year award. So again, there's coaches out there that have put a tremendous amount of effort in this past two years to put together, to put together the, uh, keep together the teams, I guess, more importantly, and to do the training, off-season training. We have a huge off-season training facility here uh, that's been provided by the Access Sports uh, Complex or the Access Storage Company. It's, 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 it's unique in their inventory. Uh, they have, I think, some 800 operations across Canada. This is the only one they have an attached sports facility to that they developed some 12 years ago. So we have our minor sports groups in there that do off-season training and development, baseball, soccer, uh, hockey, ball hockey, uh, softball, or fastball, whatever, 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 you want, whatever you want to call it, and then basketball, and so and track and field. And we have a huge throwing club here, like indoor throwing and training. And it's all that off-season development really bodes well so even though they couldn't participate in a tournament or whatever a lot of them have been out training all year uh that's been up and down with the shutdown and open shutdown but basically uh they've been out training uh and we're back pretty much in full gear right now full force with everybody in the building at any any given time we may have seven eight hundred people in the in the facility at night um 
all following the protocols and safety stuff that uh, are, are necessary. So then we have lifetime sponsorships. There have been a number of companies that don't want to be recognized. They just do it because they do it. And we've identified over the years so many companies that continue to do this, like not not just one sport, but across the board. And uh, it's, it's a recognition for them. Um, uh, and it's it's it, it makes it it's not about sponsorship it's it's about their engagement and are they're a community partner and they're no different i hate to use the word sponsor but they're a community partner that find ways to participate whether it's with their employees whether it's with the uh, a donation whether it's becoming a member we've got a new membership program for corporate guys now they can become a member and they'd be part of our whole dialogue on sport, uh, which is just being launched. So it's important to engage them as well in what you do in the community. And quite honestly, a lot of those companies have great people that are already active in sport. They're already there as coaches or whatever. So it's, it's very important to engage the employees, especially now there's a whole change in the level of sport. Like everyone talks about hockey first normally, right? But I'll tell you what, the, the soccer, the, the new population that's moving in, that has been here now, uh, their first sport is probably not hockey. Uh, and we've, we, we, and we've had those discussions. So we're trying to integrate um, a variety of things in terms of exposing all of our new citizens into uh, understanding what we do, who we are, uh, what's, what's available to them in the community, and then how to integrate or, or come out and try different things. Uh, so I know there's a number of programs out there that I th Canadian Tire and them have several programs as well. But this is a grassroots program locally that we're engaging with, with our uh, economic development and our local businesses that will be being launched probably this summer when things settle down a little more. So then you got lifetime uh, sports volunteerism. We've, we, we nominated uh, the last time around, we nominated finalists for group four gentlemen that have contributed to sport in our community 25 30 40 years so someone said how do we recognize one of them so we gave we gave them all a plaque okay uh because you you, you you can't differentiate the commitment that these people have made for all those years uh, and continue to do is so important so the lifetime volunteer thing is 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 we've, we've got so many like the list is bigger every year. So that's why the nomination thing, when we have all the nominees, we nominate everybody. Everybody's going to get uh, a, a little plaque of some sort or uh, a certificate. Appreci thank you for being part of our, our sports fabric and our community. Here's, here's a little recognition for you and we'll have it fit up. Thank you for nominating in the category. Da, da, da. Then we have team of the year. Well, team of the year, you'd always look at said, who had the best record? who won the national championship. You know what? We didn't have a lot of that this year. There are some, but it, 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 it didn't happen in a big way. But team of the year doesn't necessarily mean you have to win all the championships. It means how did the team stay together? How did everyone keep the interest on what they were doing? And it was done sporadically, uh, but this off season training and training and development, there's only so much you can do. Uh, I, I know I, uh, I have grandkids in sport and, uh, they want to play games. They do want to play games, but the off-season training and the and the training and practices are are important. And I think it helped develop the skill set, but it also helped mold the team a little more because they're dealing with each other all the time. And you're not, but you're not competing. No one, no one wants to, no one wants to uh, sit back and not play games. And the learning experience from playing games is, if you win, that's a good experience. Sometimes I think when you lose a game, it's a better experience to understand what you need to do the next time or you've had that experience. They haven't had, some of these kids haven't played a game or won or lost in two years. And we've had kids, and I'm sure not just us, that have lost scholarships because of the age. We have a number of, of, of youth out of Brantford that uh, this year have been provided scholarships in the U.S., U.S. mostly, U.S. mostly. And uh, they've been down and doing it and, and all that. And we're, you know, basketball is a big thing right now, too, with all the Canadians that are in, 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 in the U.S. in basketball. Uh, it's really had an uplifting. But there's all kinds of sports 
that are getting recognized. Um, track and field as well. Uh, throwing sports. We have a young gentleman, and he's in grade 12. He's going to the U.S. next year. He's won on the international stage, locally, regionally. He's he's probably one of the top throwers in Canada, and he's only 18. <laughs> so that's attributed to all the off-season training that they do. So when they do go to an event, they're prepared to go. Um, and Tomlin Award, the Frank Tomlin Award, has been around for long before Sports Council. Uh, we we took over the the pre presentation of it uh, with Rick Bannon, who is an Olympian himself. He's a, he's a runner, and uh, he is uh, he is sort of the co co speaker for it. And the Tomlin Award includes. I'll just run down a few names for you. So the names that you will know are the Summer Hayes boys in boxing. Uh, all the Summer Hayes boys are probably one of Canada's best recognized names. Wayne Gretzky, obviously. Uh, Rick Mannon himself. Kevin Sullivan in track and field. He's been to the Olympics uh, four different times, I believe. Now he's the, the coach at Michigan. Uh, uh, Julie Howard in swimming. Uh, Oh, uh, some people are on here twice. Uh, David Hearn in golf. Uh, Nick Kazur, uh, Peter Ham from hockey. Uh, Paula Coyne is our baseball guy. Paul ran the Red Sox and won four back-to-back -back championships in town here. And that's he was a as a uh, he was he was recognized in 2010. Uh, Krista Duchesne from track and field. She's been in the Olympics. She's you know. She ran that race with a broken hip. I don't know if you recall that or not. Uh, and uh, Aaron Carpenter from rugby. <laughs> he, on the world stage, represented Canada in more matches than anybody, I think. Uh, he's still locally. He's been a great supporter. He was inducted into our hall in 2017. And uh, the, the latest one was Jacqueline Legere. You may not know who she is. She's a downhill ice cross skating. And have you seen the video? You've seen the guys doing it as well. But she's been the world champion several times. And uh, and she's from Brantford. And she learned to skate and, and learned to skate program here. I can't remember how many years ago. So, you know, those, that whole combination is a whole community of people that have worked together to bring sport to everybody. And whether it's top down, bottom up, and they still engage with us. Um, and we, if you ever get a chance, go to our, uh, Brantford Sports Hall of Recognition website. You'll see, you'll be able to go in and see all the videos. We do videos for everybody uh, as well as their, their profiles. You can go in by name, by sport, whatever. Done an excellent job. Uh, and I would welcome everyone to come to Brantford. Come down and visit with us. Come down and talk to us. I'd like to hear what your thoughts. I'd like to share with you what we do. I'd like to hear what you do. Uh, and uh, 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 anyone has any interest, uh, We'll, we'll, we'll make them uh, our guests for the day.